Today I'm going to be playing some music for you on this instrument, the hurdy-gurdy. Uh, though it is not Irish in origin, it lends itself very well to Irish music because it is a drone instrument like the bagpipe, so it has a similar sound quality. Uh, the differences would be that a bagpipe player obviously uses air for their instrument. I use strings for mine. I have keys I press along the front to get my melody, and I have a crank here that I turn so that I can get my sound as opposed to blowing air into it. But Irish are not in origin, it's an instrument that plays Irish music beautifully, so I'll be playing some favorites for you. Uh, the first one I'll play is Fanny Power. It's been a longtime favorite of mine and always a joy to play, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>
Next up, I'm going to play Star of the County Down, which is a fun song because you can actually create sort of a medley of it with itself if you play it in two different styles. And after that, I will play another selection I enjoy, which is the Ash Grove. It's technically a Welsh one, but it has that good Celtic sound, so we'll let that slide. And I hope you enjoy both of these as well.
to round out our tour of Irish music on the Hurdy Gurdy. I have a couple more. I will play the song The South Wind, which is a simple melody, but a beautiful one, and it's always a joy to hear. And then to pick up the pace a little at the end, I will play Father Kelly's Reel. It's a little bit more of an up-tempo one, and it always lifts my spirits, and I hope it lifts yours too. Thank you so much for sharing this musical moment with me. Everybody, welcome to a very special episode of Baking with Babies. My name is Shannon Lambert Ryan, and this is Liam Jabara. So I'm part of the band of Runa, and we um, were asked by Milwaukee Irish Fest um, and Melissa. We were asked um, to share a very Kenya. special episode. Melissa. To, add, to do a very special episode for the festival um, because obviously we're missing being out on the road uh, performing for everybody over this festival summer um, but we've had some amazing opportunities um, with some of the different festivals going online and doing some wonderful programming so we are so honored and thrilled to be here with all of you today and so we're going to make a very special recipe what are we making today can you tell them a little bit about Wheat and bread wheat and bread irish wheat and bread or irish brown bread um, it's a nice hearty bread um, 
that is um, just kind of a traditional Irish loaf. We got it from some friends of ours, Keith and Kristen Getty, um, who are from Northern Ireland. Um, there's some friends of ours who now live over here in Nashville, um, which is why we're where we are today. If you've ever seen um, our online series before, um, you'll notice that we are not in our normal kitchen at home because who's Fanon? Data. So Fanon Debara is my husband and Liam's data. Um, he, um, both I and Fanon work with the Gettys um, and do some different performances. Liam, Liam Dad is our home. We will go back to our home. Uh, but at the moment, where are we? At Grandma and Papa's house down at the bay. Um, so Fanon got some work in Nashville with those guys um, for about a week and he's back at home um, where we live but we're playing it safe and so we're isolating for um, for a period of time um, since he got back and so twist our arms we got to be down at the bay and we're um, keeping to ourselves and we've got the beach to ourselves but we're down at the bay like the song do you remember the song Liam, do you remember the song down by the bay where the watermelons grow back to my home I dare not go for if I do my mother would say have you ever seen llamas wearing wearing what pajamas, pajamas down by the bay <laughs> so we're down at the bay um, and we um, uh, as we mentioned at the very beginning um, all of these episodes are called baking with babies um, because Liam and I are in the kitchen and in um, baking things in our kitchen all the time. And so we thought we'd share, while we have been at home during the pandemic, um, we thought we'd share some of those recipes with all of you. So we're gonna get started on our wheat and bread. It's a really, really simple, hearty recipe. Um, as you can see here, we've got some whole wheat flour. We have some regular all-purpose flour. We have steel cut oats or pinhead oats. Um, these are, uh, this is a wonderful company, the cans, um, that makes great oatmeal and great oats. Um, so we're using those today. We're using uh, oatmeal. Wheat and oatmeal. Yes, we're using oats for our wheat and bread. Yep. Um, brown sugar. We've got some salt and melted butter and some we baking soda. And that's all. And it's kind of put everything in and you mix it up. Can you help me? Are you gonna help me mix? Yeah, we've got our flat heel shirt on right now and our board shorts as well. So we're kind of fully into the summer festival experience as we're going. And I'm in my festival attire, wishing that we were out partying as well at the festival sites. Alrighty, so you're going to start with a cup and three quarters of a cup of wheat flour. Can you help me? Help me pour this in. What's he doing? What's he doing? He's riding on a horse. King Arthur Flower is one of our favorite companies. They make some fantastic products, some fantastic flour, and some fantastic baking products as well. Can you help me pour this in? Thank you, sir. So one and three quarters of a cup. We will need the spoons in just a moment. Can you help me? We will add, add the oats in just a second. We have oatmeal. Have oatmeal? Well, maybe we'll make some later on. Can you help me pour this next one in? One and three quarters of a cup. Fantastic. Oh, Thanks, sir. Good job. And then we're going to add a half a cup of all-purpose flour. What's that? Who's that? Who's that? That's the same guy. That's the same guy, yep. All right, so we're gonna have a half a cup or thereabouts. <laughs> Off for the recipe, well thank you so much. Yes, for any of your information, Liam's chin is perfectly fine. We're into wearing band-aids these days and different fun colorful band-aids. Who was on your band-aids? Minions? Oh, well, Minnie. Minnie? Oh, well maybe we'll get some mini ones in the next one. Can you help me pick this in? So half a cup of all-purpose flour. Very good. Baking oil piece. Oh yes, that's our next one. A teaspoon. Can you get me a teaspoon, please? Can you get me a teaspoon? So we're going to put a teaspoon of baking soda. And as I said, this is one of those, oh that's, that's the eighth of the teaspoon. So we need, let's see. We need this one. 
I know, we're not using all of our normal teaspoons and tablespoons in the cups, are we? We're using grandma's. Yeah. And they're wonderful, but a little bit different. So we're getting used to all of those things. We're feeling lucky that we can be down here. So this is one of those recipes, as I was starting to say, that it literally is kind of throw everything into a bowl, mix it up. Hey, can you help me mix this up, dude? Brush it off? Yeah. All right, can you help me mix, this, mix it up? And tell everybody, say, keep it in the bowl. Keep it in the bowl. You don't want to mix too hard. You want to keep it in the bowl. So mix up your flours and your baking soda. And then you're going to add a half teaspoon of salt. And we tend to often kind of be on the, the lesser end of the salt. And we just kind of put it in our hand and give kind of an approximate. So you want a half a teaspoon, maybe a little less. What was that? That's the salt. Okay, and can you can you brush that up? Brush that in. Brush that in and mix it up. Nice job. Mix it up. And then you're going to add brown sugar. <laughs> Do you like brown sugar? Tell everybody brown sugar is? No. Brown sugar is nice. And olive oil. And olive oil is nice. Yeah, olive oil is nice. Too. Castor oil, castor oil is not nice. You can tell we have been working hard in our garden back at home and we have unfortunately had some different insect pests and some different uh, pests on the ground and moles have been one of them. And one of the recommendations is to put castor oil um, around your garden uh, to keep the moles away. So, and we had, who is in our garden? Who is eating our lima beans? Mr. Mr. Mole. So we had to put castor oil and castor oil is not so nice. Castor oil is disgusting. So we hope the mole thinks so too. Ew. Ew. I know. Ew. But brown sugar is not disgusting. Brown sugar is nice. Okay. So for the brown sugar, the recipe originally calls for about one to two tablespoons. We often tend to put three. Um, it just gives it a really, uh, really nice, obviously a little bit sweeter, but a really nice taste. Um, to it. All right, we'll taste, we'll taste it at the very end. We're going to put it in first, and those tablespoons can be kind of heaping tablespoons. So depending, okay, that's depending on um, just how sweet or not that you would like your bread to be um, can determine how much you put in. Brown sugar. I see you're eating brown sugar. Is it nice? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Yeah, so brown sugar and white sugar if you've got a little taste tester, it's one of those things to, you know, just goes along with baking with babies. Uh, but this is a good recipe um, that is technically safe if you have taste testers. Um, it doesn't have any eggs in it. You can add an egg if you'd like to, if you'd like to make it a little bit more cake-like or a little less dense um, of a bread. You can, or a flour. Or a flour. Um, but you can add an egg if you want to as well. Um, what we've been told. We don't tend to do that, but it does not naturally call for any You may see the box. Yeah. Ready? All right. So once you have all of your brown sugar mixed up, we're going to add some melted butter, two tablespoons of melted butter. We make it more than It's right over here. So we melted this on our stove a little bit ago, so it's not too hot anymore. Okay. So we're going to pour that in. Our two tablespoons of melted Butter. We need butter. Do we need some butter? butter? All right, so you mix that up with your dry ingredients. Mix that up with me. Yeah. And you want to make sure um, that you kind of thoroughly mix it up if you can. Um, it should be just kind of really crumbly in its texture. You can see there are some bigger chunks and you can work them out with your fingers as well. Alrighty. And then after that, you have a half a cup of pinhead oats and a cup of buttermilk left. Okay, let's brush these. And what we actually tend to do, you don't have to do this, but what we tend to do. That. Yes, exactly. That's milk. Or You can make your own buttermilk by adding, um, for each cup of milk, you can add a slice of lemon or like a tablespoon of lemon juice, which is what um, we tend to do. We don't tend to usually use buttermilk in our house. But what we do ahead of time... We with like Dog to me die. We do like the song Buttermilk Sky. That is a Runa song, and he is definitely a runatic, as it were. Um, and that's one of the songs that we sing. But we don't tend to use uh, buttermilk very often 
in our house. So you can make it um, at home if you don't have um, buttermilk itself, you can make it in your house. But what we, we tend to do with the pinhead oats, you don't have to do this um, as part of the recipe, um, but it's something that we've found is really nice with a lot of kind of the harder grains, wheat, um, oats, things like that. Um, they tend to be a little hard, um, but what we tend to do is at the very beginning when we're starting um, the recipe, we tend to put the pinhead oats into the milk itself and soak it for probably about a half an hour um, at least before we start the recipe. You don't have to do that and it still tastes really wonderful, um, but we tend to find that that softens them up a little bit, so that might be helpful. All right, so let's make our buttermilk. Let's squeeze each of our lemons in, so that's one. Would you like to drink this or eat the rest? Mm. Is that sour? Yes. All right, can you help me with the next one? Let's scoop this over here. Yes, no. yeah, so I'll squeeze it in. And, whoa, we're squirting it everywhere. But you may have it after. Would you like to taste it? I know, dude, that's your thing. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna pour your buttermilk and your pinhead oats into your recipe. All right, you your spoon, you ready? I'm gonna pour it in here. And any that are stuck inside, we'll just scoop out the rest of the way. And obviously you're gonna stir it gently to begin with, just so you don't get the milk everywhere, but you're gonna stir it in thoroughly. And depending on how hot and humid it is outside or in your house or where you uh, live in the world, um, you may need a little bit more milk um, or a little less milk, depending, but you want it to be pretty, um, careful, buddy. you want it to be um, a dry enough um, mixture. All right. I'm chopping. I'm chopping. You're chopping, okay. So you want to make sure that's mixed up all the way and it should be a really chop. sticky plant. Ew, chop. Oh, we're chopping, okay. <laughs> should be a pretty, a pretty thick, kind of sticky dough. And like I said, depending on the humidity of where you are, um, we'll determine whether you might want to add a little bit more milk um, or not. Okay. And you're going to take, you're going to grease a pan, a bread pan, and grease it with butter or with cooking spray. And then we're going to put our dough directly in there. Yep. Yeah, okay. Should we get some more dough? Here, let's put it on this side to make it a little bit easier. Ready? Put it in. And you can put it in all at once, or if you're baking with babies, it's sometimes a little bit more fun to do it kind of a spoonful at a time. Oh, some more. Should we get the big spoon? Yeah, the big spoon is definitely a bit more effective. Okay, and, and the little one. And the little one. So you're going to transfer all of that in there, and then you're going to um, preheat your oven before you start. You're going to preheat your oven to 385 degrees Fahrenheit. to cook for about 40 minutes and you're gonna check it about kind of 30 to 35 minutes. All right, let's put the rest of this in here and then we'll go put it into the oven. And then, and then we need more. And, and then, then we're gonna go read books. Yeah, we're gonna go read books. Maybe go down to the beach. We could bring our, our books down to the beach. Put our feet in the water. Are you a beach dude? Yeah, do you like the beach? Yeah. Put it into our oven. Put it into our oven. We turned our oven on. Yep. All right. So stick it in here. Like I said, it should be kind of a sticky do a sticky dough. You're testing it. You're testing it. Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah. There are no eggs, but generally speaking, we don't taste it until it's. Okay, come on in, let's put it in the oven. Alrighty, so we have our oven to 385 degrees. We're gonna put our wheat and bread inside. Right in there. So for about 40 minutes, and um, we're gonna check it about half an hour, 35 minutes, and we'll see how we do. Can you say happy baking, everybody? Happy baking, everybody. Happy baking, everybody. Good luck. Hello, everybody. Why do you know Hello everyone, welcome to the next step of our episode of Baking with Babies. We are ready to check on our... Hello everyone! Hello everyone! Hello everybody! Are we ready to check on our wheat and bread? Yeah? 
think it's finished. Let's see. <gasps> I think it is. It's still warm. It's still warm. It's still very hot. So I think that turned out really nicely, dude. That color is perfect. We tested it with a cake tester or with a knife. So either one will work. We tested it a couple times and it's cooked all the way through. So we're going to let it cool for a little bit. And then we're going to test it, right? We're going to taste it. It is excellent with butter and jam, if we do so say ourselves. And put that on it with, with Liam gets home. Putting jam in it when Liam gets home? Our homemade jam? We made, made jam on a previous episode, so we're totally into jam these days. And what kind of butter should we put on it? Oh, say it so they can hear you. Carry gold! Carry gold, because it's the way to go, folks. All right, can you say good luck and happy baking? Happy baking. Happy baking, and thank you so much to Milwaukee Irish Fest. Thank you so much to uh, uh, Milwaukee Irish Fest. Milwaukee Irish Fest. <laughs> and to Melissa for helping us put all this together. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy baking, and we'll see you at the next happy episode. <laughs> Welcome back to our episode of Baking with Babies. The most important part, we have to taste our, what is this? Our wheat and bread. So let's see how we did. The firehouse is all the way down there. We're at, what is this? The, oh, the bay. Mm, that was, good. was that nice? Down by the bay where the 